This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to more Miles Edge War Face Attorney Investigations Prosecutor's Path. We're on the Forgotten Turnabout and Part 2. I think this is the second of only two parts. Well, so, I know. Yeah. <laughs> the Disney Cinema Ensemble. April 6th, 9, 18 a.m. Wow, that happened in very little time. Like 18 minutes? I guess it started at 8.30, but... So. Grand Tower PIC Meeting Room. <laughs> Oh, Francie's back. Order in the court. Prosecutor Von Karma, your report, please. I have bad news. We've searched every inch of the Grand Tower, but... The auction gavel was nowhere to be found! <coughs> that is most unfortunate. It seems I am left with no choice but to pronounce a verdict. <gasps> well... It sure seems that way, you know. Normally, you wouldn't commit a blunder like leaving behind the murder weapon, you know. The best criminals would never do something like that, you see. Ugh! I don't have enough information! Is this as far as I can go? Yes, yes, it's a shame, you know. But it can't be helped, you see. This takes me back, you know. All those defendants who came to me asking for a plea bargain. They trusted me, you know. Told me every one of their dirty little secrets, you see. And when it came time for the trial, I'd get them sentenced to life in prison. <laughs> they were all completely dumbstruck, you know. Each and every one of them. <laughs> oh, how I wish you all could have seen it, you know. The, the stupid look on their faces. We get it, you're evil. I shall hereby pronounce my verdict. Please humbly accept the words of the law. There's... She's just, she's just like, uh, he's, he's guilty. <laughs> There's nothing more I can do. With this, both Kay and I are... If only we had some evidence! I never thought that I would be passing judgment on you like this. Is this the end? The defendant, Blaze de Best, I hereby indict you. What? What?! Oh, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? I have here documents regarding a certain case. You know what? This is probably why she's been up late every night studying all these things. She's like, gotta find all the case files, all the stuff. I don't know why I'm doing this weird thing. I look like yeah. I'm digging. Or but, swimming. Or swim swimming through the case files. <laughs> coming, up, coming up for air. Yeah. <laughs> the IS-7 incident. A case that happened 18 years ago. Documents, you say? Why would you suddenly... Wait. You don't mean... On the day of the crime, the record of your keycard being used was because... I came to this room to fetch these documents, of course. Although, when I entered the meeting room, it seems it was before the black market auction had begun. <laughs> what if she was later? She was just like, I'm here to get the case document. What uh, the heck? heck is happening? <laughs> At first, I told you that I came to gather documents about you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. At that time, I simply could not tell you the truth. IS-7 and incident documents jotted down I'm the okay organizer. So Courtney is on our side now. I mean, I kind of figured it would turn to that, but... <laughs> what are you doing, Justine? Why are you indicting Pops? Without any basis, th this is slander! That was a wonderful remark, Sebastian. Huh? R really? Of course, there is a basis. During the case 18 years ago, Prosecutor Manfred von Karma fabricated information regarding the body. That was because the body of the sculptor Isaac Dover had been stolen. Papa fabricated information about a body? What do you mean? Yeah, so Franziska apparently never knew her dad forged evidence. <laughs> Marty is face palming right now. I'm disgusted with this. With him or her? With him. And also that no one would tell her. D does she know that her dad's bad? I think she knows that he killed a guy. Okay. So that, that's bad. Okay. But, oh my gosh. Yeah, but she didn't actually know he was like a sleazy prosecutor. Sleazy prosecutor, yeah. 
Detective La- Lacer. Lacer. Rip I Lacer. Lancer. I almost said Lancer. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's Delta Rune. <laughs> Detective Lacer, who handled the initial investigation, reported that the body had gone missing. However, in order to deceive Prosecutor Von Karma, there is a person who purposely did not report to him that the body had disappeared. What? What did you say? That person would not forgive those who defied him, nor would he allow others to hold power. He would use any means necessary in order to bend others to his will. And then, also 18 years ago, Director Young was ordered by a certain individual to write a fake autopsy report. Dr. Young was the one who wrote the autopsy report for the Aya 7 incident? P please wait, Granny didn't do anything wrong. She was ordered by that person. She had no choice but to obey. That person? That person was the chief prosecutor at the time. The chief prosecutor 18 years ago? Y you don't mean... The chief prosecutor who gave Papa his... F oh, never mind. Wrong person. The chief prosecutor who gave Papa his first penalty! It was none other than you, Blaze to Best. So you remember back in the first game where there was the flashback of Gabon Karma getting his penalty and I gave the chief prosecutor a really deep voice? I knew it was this guy. Oh. And you were like, why are you giving him that voice? I'm like, there's a reason. Then why are you giving him the chief smoking voice? <laughs> yep. Okay. I do remember that. So yeah, Von Karma only got his first penalty because of this scumbag. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm happy for that, but... Well, what are you saying? Pops would never do something like that. Sebastian, we do not need your opinion right now. <laughs> Just wow. shut down. <laughs> Blaze to best, do you have a rebuttal? Fabricating stuff about the body. Von Karma did all that on his own, you know. Falsifying the autopsy report? Yun, you would actually do something like that? Man, you really did some terrible things behind my back, you know. Seeing as how all the parties concerned are here today, we should ask them directly. But please wait! Granny is- now! Granny, I'm sorry! I- I knew. That's why I- Yep. Because if I didn't, he said he would expose you! If I didn't assist in the crime, Granny would be the prosecuted! That's what that man, the conductor, told me! You in trouble now. Yeah. So Miss Jensen was being threatened. Was the conductor who threatened you Blaze de Best? Th that I don't know. The person who threatened me was the auction conductor. They do have similar physiques, but I never saw the person's face. Any trivial thing is fine. Give us a characteristic that could be a clue. His six-pack abs <laughs> could show through that shirt. Th that's right! The conductor's mask, it exposed just a tiny part of his face. There was a tattoo there. I'm sure of it. Conductor's clothes data updated in the organizer. A tattoo, you say? They had a face tattoo? It's a fake beard that he wears. I really have no idea what you're talking about, you know. As you can see, there are clearly no tattoos on my face, you see. So that person doesn't match me at all, you know. The person who threatened her, this so-called conductor, I wonder who it is, you know. <laughs> you have incurred the wrath of the uh, goddess of law. I suggest you watch what you say. Hasn't he incurred your own wrath rather than the wrath of the goddess? Jill Crane has been pursuing you, just as I have. And I will not let her death be in vain. Crane was, you know, you say she was pursuing me? My, my, I didn't really know her that well, you know. <laughs> she was only on the same case and committee that I was in charge of. <laughs> I don't mind girls chasing after me, you know, but I don't recall ever fa her ever falling for me, you see. You're Hello. 68, dude. <laughs> you didn't know the victim well. That's a testimony we haven't heard up until now. Before the eyes of the Goddess of Law, you shall give us an official testimony. 
I see, I see. Everyone is bullying me. If you're gonna go that far, that's fine, you see. I'll just have to make you disappear. Every last one of you. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall cooperate with you as well. If we let this opportunity slip by, I doubt we will ever get him to stand in court again. Please do not let this chance go to waste. Yes. I promise I will live up to your expectations. Now then, Blaze de Best, you shall testify regarding the victim. He has he has one of the creepiest portraits. <laughs> his eyes, man. His eyes. I just eyes. need him to lift up his beard, and then his tattoo will be there. <laughs> this That's tattoo will, will protect, protect me, me from, from harm. Regarding Jill Crane. The victim, Jill Crane, was a member of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee, you see. Also known as Payne in Charge. Personally, I didn't really know her that well, you know. Either way, it's not like I had a motive to murder her, you know. I have no idea why she was pursuing me, you see. You intend to deny your guilt until the bitter end, don't you? Of course he does! There's no way Pops could be the criminal! I mean, he's my Pops, you know! He's the very best like no one ever was! Yes, yes, Sebastian. If you're gonna stick up for me, be sure to have a clear basis, you know. Uh, uh, alright, I, I got it! I'll clear you of these false accusations, Pops. I believe in you, Pops. We won't lose to someone like Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, yes. You really are pure, you know. That person. He really loves his father, doesn't he? However, one must be able to accept the mistakes of their father. No matter how much they may look up to him. Each person must atone for their crimes no matter who they are. Uh, I did not say save a screenshot. <laughs> it's a good screenshot to save. That's a, that's a good one. This is going to be hard for Sebastian, but... I simply cannot overlook his father's crimes. Regarding Jill Crane. <laughs> I'm, oh, I look innocent. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what his facial tattoo is. Uh, he, she was a member of the Pain and Charge Committee. If she was a member of the PIC, then you should have been familiar with her. Well, I mean, I got her burritos once, but like, that was it. I knew her face, but that's about it, you know. It's not like we met each other on a regular basis, you see. I couldn't even tell you the names of everybody on this committee. I just couldn't. There's Baldy, Mole Face. Because <laughs> his face has a mole on it, not because his mole. His head face looks There's like a mole. There's Winston Payne. Oh, yeah, There's everyone Thomas knows Payne. Payne. He's, he's <laughs> Thomas Payne. That's Winston Payne's brother. <laughs> I'll have you know that our forefather wrote the <laughs> common sense. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you weren't very familiar with the victim? That's right. I didn't even know about the burn mark on Crane's hand, you see. You didn't know about the burn mark? Well, well, you see, even if I had gotten close to her, she would have disappeared soon. It's a pain to remember someone, you know, when they're just gonna disappear, you see. In other words, anyone who defies him disappears. That's not ominous or anything. I would like you to add your statement about the victim's burn to your testimony. I only just learned that she had a burn mark on her hand. So you're saying that you did not know about the victim's burn. Is that really the truth? You really are persistent, you know. Do you really think I would pay attention to every little wound on a woman's hand? I would think the burn mark on the victim's hand would be hard to miss. Now that you mention it, Jill Crane would regularly wear gloves. I, too, did not know about the burn until the incident occurred. Joe Crane regularly, regularly wore gloves. I thought so. She was probably trying to hide the burn mark, you see. I understand how sensitive a woman can be about these things, you know. I would like you to add your so-called sensitive understanding of a woman to your testimony. <laughs> Maybe she was always wearing gloves in order to hide the burn mark. So you were aware that she always wore gloves? Well aware. Those gloves were practically her trademark, you see. But I guess they weren't just a fashion statement. 
She wanted to hide her burn mark, you know. I wonder if that girl over there is also hiding something under her bandages. Huh? I'm not hiding anything. I think you are, you know. You're hiding the face of a criminal. Those words should be directed at someone like you. I shall expose here and now the face of a true criminal. <laughs> How amusing. Go ahead and try it if you think you can. So Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. That's interesting. I should look over the evidence one more time. Why were her gloves separate? Either way, it's not like I had a motive to kill her. I mean, I like killing people, but like, it's gotta be specific people. <laughs> Was there ever any trouble between the two of you over work? <laughs> Unlikely, you know. I'm kind of important, you see. I've gotten reports saying that she was exceedingly capable. But you know, our social status was completely different, you see. So we didn't talk much, you know. That may be true, but it doesn't prove that you didn't kill her. That's rather prejudiced, you know. I mean, look at you. You're taking the side of a criminal. It seems Miss Crane was the one who had an interest in you, Mr. Chairman. My six-pack is pretty impressive, I know. You know, that really is a mystery. I haven't the faintest idea, you see. So that's that. Since I had no motive, your reasoning doesn't hold, you know. I have no idea why she was pursuing me. So you have no clue why the victim had been pursuing you? Nope. Not in the slightest, you know. It's because Pops is such a handsome man! Uh... It's true, you know. Women appear before me and then disappear, disappear, and then reappear. Hehe, <laughs> you guys could never reach my Pops' level of awesomeness. Uh, it would certainly be impossible for a normal person. Having people appear and then physically disappear on a daily basis. Well then, maybe Courtney's going to disappear too. Hmph. <laughs> Before that happens, I'll see to it that your way of life disappears today. I see, I see. Then I should finish it before the day's over. <laughs> I will have to organize my information about the victim. If there's anything you don't understand, you should look over the evidence again. Perhaps you'll find a new fact this time around. Francisca, you're willing to help me? I told you I'm doing this for Kay Faraday, not you. Francisca seems to be worrying about Kay in her own way. And Interpol. Alright, so you thought it was on this? Yeah. Because in the photo, her gloves are sticking out of her pocket. That's true. But that's not the right one. Blaze the best, take a look at this piece of evidence and tell me what you think. What do I think? Absolutely nothing at all. Right, Sebastian? Yeah, Pops, that has nothing to do with your testimony just now. No! Even Sebastian! <laughs> it looks like Mr. DeBest has gotten a bit livelier, hasn't he? Indeed, he probably feels a lot more confident with his father backing him up. However, I will break through that confidence of the DeBest father and son duo. Um... Disguise for the conductor? No. no. There's something I'm missing. One of them has a bird mark? Yeah, so remember the con- oh wait. Can we check the conversation again? Or it's like I recognize that burn mark anywhere? Yeah. But Let's if just she- present that. Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. If that is true, then it creates a huge contradiction. Oh, a huge contradiction, you say? I would like you to listen to the voices recorded on this stuffed animal one more time. And I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. And she screams. Silence, huh? 
I've been waiting for my chance to get revenge all this time. Yeah! <laughs> we were under the impression that this was the moment when the victim was murdered. I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. We thought that this statement was said by the culprit. I isn't that fine? What's the problem, you know? Heh. <laughs> there is a huge problem with that. If the victim had been wearing gloves from the start, it would have been impossible to see the burn on her hand. Objection. Gloves come off very easily, you know. She could have taken them off during the auction. That's... That's not true. Miss Crane had been wearing her gloves when I took her place. She must have been wearing them before the, she was murdered. What, what are you saying? You, don't you understand the position you're in? I, I, I'm not scared anymore. I have Granny here with me. Blaze, your day of reckoning is finally come. I love how like, literally everyone is just turned against. Oh, everyone. Except his son. <laughs> Somehow, it seems like you all want to disappear. Oh, crap, that always happens. <laughs> Permanently. The only one who will be disappearing here is you, Blaze the best. Hey, how dare you say that to Pops? Does it really matter if the burn mark was visible or not? It certainly does matter. If the burn mark was visible, then we'd have a complete turnabout of the situation. What? What are you saying? If the victim's burn mark wasn't visible, what exactly does that tell you? The culprit also has a burn mark. The victim did not have a burn mark. There weren't any burn marks. Well, the last one's stupid. Uh, probably the culprit had a burn mark. Sebastian, turn your way of thinking around. If the victim was wearing gloves, then her burn mark could not have been seen. In that case, whose burn mark was seen? Someone else's burn mark? Precisely. The culprit must have had a burn mark as well. I like how, like, Edgeworth's just, like, subtly mentoring him to, like, make yeah. him a little smarter. In other words, I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. The person who said this was not the culprit, but the victim. What? What? Objection. Sebastian, could you please step aside? Edgeworth, all your reasoning up till now was just a figment of your imagination, you know. The culprit had a burn mark. <laughs> Where was it, you know? If you can't answer that, then your logic doesn't hold up, you know. Where was the culprit's burn mark? I wonder where the burn mark could have been. During the auction, wasn't everyone wearing a disguise? Indeed. During the auction, everyone should have been dressed in a particular way. If the burn mark was still visible under those conditions, then... Now, now, why don't you show us? Where was the culprit's burn? You'll have to show me the proof, you see. Where? What did he say? Oh, are these just carryovers from... Yes, these are incident documents. So... Where was the culprit's burn? It had to be visible... It couldn't have been on the face, and it couldn't have been on the hands, right? Because of the gloves? We're talking about the culprit, keep in mind. So where would the burn mark have been? Was it instead of the tattoo, there was a burn mark? Could you take a look at this piece of evidence? Oh, we got a refill on our HP randomly. Are you suggesting it will tell me where the burn mark was located? It's too bad, but I just don't understand it at all, you know. No! I was wrong. I need to consider the state the conductor uh, of the conductor when Miss Crane saw the burn mark. If I focus on that, then it should come to light. Oh, I, I think that was the wrong piece of evidence. Did we get a piece of evidence updated regarding the tattoo? Um, yes, we did. Oh, conductor's close. He has a facial tattoo, yeah. That's what I was... It was what the conductor was wearing during the auction. In other words, the outfit you were wearing at the time. 
<laughs> what can you figure out from the clothes alone? The conductor had been wearing a white suit, white gloves, and a mask. His attire had covered up most of his skin. However, according to Miss Jensen's testimony, the conductor's mask exposed a small part of his face. In addition, while she thought there had been a tattoo there, it's possible that she simply mistook the burn mark for a tattoo. A burn mark on his face? That's all very scintillating, but I'm afraid you're getting excited over nothing, you know. None of the PIC members have any bird marks on their faces, you see. Naturally, that includes me as well, you know. Huh? P pops But... Sebastian, could you please be quiet? If you're an idiot, then act like one, you know. Normally, Sebastian is a nuisance to everyone around him. But this time, I owe him my gratitude. That reaction from Blaze's own son, it reveals the truth more clearly than anything else. Thanks to him, I am confident that my reasoning is correct. Yeah. I know who that unidentified piece of evidence belongs to. I wonder what's wrong with that prosecutor. Usually, Sebastian is slower to arrive at the truth than anyone else. However, this time, he has probably figured it out. His own father is a criminal. Since he knows the truth, he's... In pain, isn't he? If he didn't know the truth, he could have remained blissful in his ignorance. Okay. We are here in order to pursue the truth. It doesn't matter what path my reasoning takes. The important thing is to arrive at the truth. Once before, when I lost faith in my reasoning, you said that to me, and you showed me the way. This time, I shall show you the truth. You are innocent. I... I also want to know the truth. Mr. Edgeworth, please tell me! Yes, that's the spirit. <laughs> that's impossible, you know, for all of you. I mean, just where could I possibly have a burn mark? It's nowhere to be found, you see. There's no evidence to prove that I'm the culprit, you know. Oh, I actually think we are going to get for this in this recording session. But that's right, there's no contradiction at all. There's no way there could be a contradiction! Not for my pops! Sebastian, I understand why you don't want to admit it. However, if you avert your eyes from the truth, you will regret it forever. P pops I... Just... What should I do? Ha! I really wonder why you're such an idiot, you know. Sebastian, if you really want to save me, you'll have to try a little bit harder, you see. Gotta use your head, you know. Honestly, you really are a useless idiot. N no way! I didn't mean to do that, but I tried real hard! I tried my best, Pops! I went to the school you told me to go to. I reached the top of my class just like you told me to. Just look at this jacket! Only someone who graduates at the top of his class gets to wear it. I did everything you told me to do! That's how I got to be the best at the academy! I even won all those awards! Just so I could be like you, Pops! You really are... such an idiot, you know. You know those gold stars you got on your tests? I made the teachers give them to you. Every speech and debate contest, all of the judges were my friends. You know, Sebastian, if you weren't even able to notice something like that, you're really not worthy of being called my son. Wow. Don't you think? Ah, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> even my son has disappeared. <laughs> oh my, it's enough to make me cry, you know. He was trying his best for me, and yet he was totally useless, you know. You are truly a despicable person. As the chairman of the PIC, and as a father. Even I feel sorry for that foolish prosecutor! Yeah, I'm feeling really bad for I'm Sebastian feeling bad now. too, I'm like, ooh! Poor Mr. Prosecutor. Blaze 
to best you? Just what do you think of your own son? He's just a useless pawn, you see. Whoa now, maybe you should look in the mirror before you criticize me, you know. I mean, even you, you also used Sebastian to get close to me, didn't you? I cannot deny that. However, he is not a mere pawn. He always tries to do his very best even if the results aren't always up to par. I've seen just how hard he tries. And yet you refuse to even acknowledge it. <laughs> that kid is no good, you see, no matter what he does or is told to do. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave this offering to the Goddess of Law to you. Deliver her Jine Justment. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. That was horrible. Ugh. Deliver her divine judgment against Blaze de Best. Yes, that was my intention from the beginning. If there was a burn mark on the conductor's face, then Blaze de Best must be hiding it. Fake beard. You think it's fake beard? Fake <laughs> He's not beard. beardy at He's all. Not really He's not <laughs> what was he wearing at during the auction? Baldy. That is the key to revealing the truth. Well then, allow me to hear your answer. Please show me the piece of evidence that proves the culprit had a burn mark on his face. There's a Karen's testimony regarding... Yeah, he had two wigs and a wavy wig, and the wavy wig is still unused. <laughs> I wonder if it's that... It's a fake beard. I wonder if that's the beard. <laughs> Beardy. Beardy? You're going down. I feel like if he had a fake wig left unused, and he wore a fake wig to work every day for 20 years, that's like just, that's, that's dedication. Yeah. I gotta hand it to him. It's, no, it's like, one day he's bald, the next day he just comes in with all his hair. What do you guys think? I tried this new hair growth formula. It's awesome. Oh my gosh. If you would recall Miss Jensen's testimony, there's still one point that remains unexplained. Two types of wigs had been prepared, one of which was left unused. Do you mean the wavy wig? What are you talking about? It was something Miss Jensen found when she switched places with the victim. What does something like that have to do with the burn? Inside the costume trunk, Miss Jensen witnessed two wigs. One of them had been used by Miss Jensen to make her look like the victim. Now then, just what was the other wig used for? It doesn't seem like it was a spare wig. There's no need to overthink it. Just compare the attire of the true culprit, the conductor, with that of Blaze de Best. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stare at me like that. <laughs> Don't you think there's just one spot where there is a huge contradiction? Specifically around his face. So that's... not a wig at all. Indeed, it was no wig. Blaze the best, it was your fake beard! Thank God! Uh, <laughs> this is a real beard, you know. That also explains why his beard can catch on fire. <laughs> so <laughs> it's fake. Don't tease me like that, Edgeworth. I grew my beard by myself. Your son must have realized the truth before anyone else. That's why he was trying so desperately to protect you. You were also worried that he would tell the truth. Isn't that why you drove your son away from here? Because he knew that his father was hiding a burn under his fake beard. Blaze the best? How about you remove that fake beard of yours? How about it? How about you yeah! It burns, it burns, and goggles do nothing! Did he just say it burns, it burns, it gobbles to nothing? The goggles do nothing. He couldn't douse the fire fast enough with his oh, tears. Oh, <laughs> so, so literally everything burned up. Ah, uh, a burn mark. Prosecutor Edgeworth, justice has been served before the goddess of law. For that, I give you my thanks. In case you missed it, he had a burn mark on his chin of a skull. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. He had no hair on his head otherwise? He had, like, slight... Tiny hair. Yeah, he was totally bald. He's baldy now. <laughs> Welcome to Baldy's Basics. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I should be the one thanking you. Blaze to best, I hereby announce my verdict. We want all the people in the PIC are like, He's bald. bald. He's bald. <laughs> you shall be taken into custody for the murder of Jill Crane. And then he kills everybody. 
<laughs> there was the bomb. <laughs> the bomb. April 6th, 9.44 a.m. Wow, we, we got through this real fast. Grand Tower PIC meeting room. <sighs> Mr. Edgeworth, thank you very much. I'm so happy you believed in me to the very end. I love this music. There's no need to thank me. As a prosecutor. No, as a friend. I simply wanted to save you. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I bring good tidings. It seems that former Chairman DeBest has been safely detained in the detention center. However, the search for the murder weapon, the auction gavel, continues. Blaze DeBest is a shrewd man. There's a good chance that he's already disposed of it. There's also... One piece of testimony that concerns me. Blaze DeBest mentioned that the only thing he did not fake were the letters. What do you mean? Thank you so much for helping with the plan. I'm glad we can... First, he found the letter in Jill Crane's clothes. That one. Then he also found this letter on Kay, which was on, who was unconscious in the storeroom. <sighs> the contents of the letter seem to suggest that the two have been corresponding with each other. And that's what Kay's five. No, I don't know. Which is why Blaze to best assumed that the two were working together. Ridiculous. That can't be right. After reading the two letters, he decided to pin the crime on Kay Faraday. In order to cast suspicion on her, he planted one of the letters in a noticeable spot. The deceased Jill Crane's left breast pocket. What a crud butt. Isn't that just an excuse? Yes, that is what I thought as well. It may have simply been a last-ditch effort to save himself. However, before the stern eyes of the goddess of law, these are all trivial matters. His crime shall certainly not go unpunished. Here's what I'm wondering. Who's going to be our weird rival prosecutor in the fifth case? Because she's not our rival anymore. Not, at least, yeah. yeah. With this, I have finally fulfilled one of my long-standing missions. Judge Courtney, will you tell me what you know? Why did Blaze de Best murder Jill Crane? And what lies hidden behind this case? Yes, I don't mind. You have the right to know everything. After your hearing, and after we get rid of your prosecutor's badge. <laughs> Long ago, Jill Crane was in love with a cameraman. Um, this is going very different. That man was pursuing the black market auction as a journalist. And then, before he could reach the truth, he was erased. The feelings and items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. Although, in the end, she was the one who was murdered instead. He's spry for an old man. I see. So that's what happened. While the goddess of law cannot condone her actions, we have succeeded in her goal of bringing Blaze to best crimes to light. So, Judge Courtney's goal was to expose Blaze to best and reveal the dark secrets of the PIC. Um, by the way, what happened to the young prosecutor? We've been unable to contact him for some time now. Do you have any idea where he might be? I have not been truly working for him, so... I see. I feel so sorry for him. What you should be sorry for is the fact that he was kept in the dark up until now. No matter how cruel reality is, he will have to accept it. If he can't, he won't be able to walk his own path in life. I love Franziska's character development. I love it too! That's why I like her as a character! Ever. A father's influence is not something that is easily erased. However, I'm sure he will be able to change from here on out. <sighs> yes, that's right. Surely. You must be right. Will I, too, be able to walk my own path in life? Kay, is your body all right? Yeah, thanks to you. I'm so sorry, even though you're my patient. You ended up getting suspected because of me. Ow! You can't just take care of the patient's body. You've got to take care of the heart, too. 
That's my granny. Kay, how are your memories? I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. Well then, I shall take my leave here. She's gotta Lotta go get that. hasn't talked at all. I know, it's great. <laughs> I'll be presiding over Patricia Roland's trial. That would be the trial for the murder of Horace Knightley, case two. Who's in charge of the defense? Miss Crane was supposed to be her defense attorney. But now that she has passed away, we are currently arranging for a replacement defense attorney. Phoenix Wright? Maybe. <laughs> Jill Crane had been in charge of Patricia Rowland's defense? I'll also have to get in contact with Sebastian quickly, since he's the prosecutor in charge. Well then... Ah, but please wait! What about Mr. Edgeworth's prosecutor or badge? What will happen? I think Blaze ate it. <laughs> ate it? <laughs> like Phoenix right with the bottle? Yeah! No. I really hate Edgeworth. <laughs> Ew. What will happen to his prosecutor's badge? With the chairman's arrest, the PIC is no longer functional. Just put pain in charge! <laughs> so I cannot answer that question easily. Perhaps one could say only the goddess of law knows. But that's... You don't need to worry about me. This is the path that I have chosen. It seems you have no plans to change it either. Of course not. I chose this path to seek the truth. With the, dis with the departure of Blaze de Best, the law has once again returned to our hands. If you truly desire to continue the prosecutorial's path, I am willing to assist you in reclaiming your badge. Thanks, girl. I appreciate the sentiment, but I must decline. I did not relinquish my badge with half-hearted feelings. I see. It seems that our paths of law will continue to run counter with each other. Heh. <laughs> Until our paths cross once again, I shall have you hold on to that badge. That was my intention from the start. Princess could like, just get a room already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do not ship that. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. However, on the occasion... The goddess of law is quite generous. Edgeworth don't get shipped with nobody. Yeah, except for Phoenix Wright. Which makes no sense, but yep. we're not getting into that. Please return this notebook to its prom proper owner. Kay's promise notebook. It seems this was scheduled to be put up for bidding at the Black Market Auction! Could wow! Wow! <laughs> That's horrible. The name Kay is written on the notebook. It seems Blaze to Best quickly realized this belonged to the girl. Oh, also I just want to say, because... There were things in the auction that were related to the smuggling ring. Uh -huh. It's implied Blaze might have been part of the smuggling oh, ring as well. Oh, 100%. Or at least, like, was aware of it. It's just like, oh, Jacques Portsman, the uh, prosecutor who works with the smuggling ring? Sure, give him the good office. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he wants a basketball hoop? Sure. <laughs> give him the <laughs> give good office. Give it to office. him. <laughs> Since the letter he found also contained the same name. You speak as if he really did not know about the letters. Are you saying that Blaze really did not prepare the letters himself? Yes, that man said so himself. Kay Faraday's goal was to steal back the notebook. Jill Crane's goal was to get revenge. In order to achieve their goals, the two teamed up to infiltrate the auction. Or so he says. Unfortunately, this was all Blaze's misunderstanding. It was purely a coincidence. If the attorney from the PIC and Kay really were acquaintances... It would be strange that she never mentioned it to me, considering her personality. <laughs> you really do trust her, don't you? In the end, the notebook was used as another red herring, but... It is something that is very important to that girl, isn't it? I'll make it a special exception and return it. I'm sure that's what the Goddess of Law desires. That's... um... I appreciate it. I shall pray that they that she recovers her lost memories. And that she doesn't. <laughs> da, 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 da. Everybody's hanging Bye, out. Zelda. Bye, Zelda. Um, is something wrong? <laughs> you always sound like a monkey every time you do that. <laughs> Kay, I am returning something very important to you. It's the CG of Edgeworth. Ah, this is... Always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. 
Never cry in front of strangers. Aww. Look, Daddy! I wrote them all down! Yep, I'll be sure to follow all of our promises and become a hero just like you, Daddy! That's right. There was one more. I forgot to write down the most important promise. Oh wait, that was still her as a kid. Promise number five. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. <laughs> I'll be sure to remember. I'll never ever forget them. Always try your hardest to learn things you don't understand. That's right, I'm, I'm, I am. Whoa, holy crap. We've seen that before. Yeah, but I am the great thief who steals the truth, K. Faraday. I'm the se second Yadagrasu and Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. K, you remember? <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing though. Thank you so much, it's all thanks to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Even when I lost my memories, you were still always there trying to save me, right? Heh, <laughs> it seems you're back to normal. Wow, Kay! You've gotten better! Your health comes first. Now you can relax. Just make sure you don't run off and lose your memories again. Ugh. She looks really creepy. <laughs> She's like, I've been bruised and damaged! <laughs> Miss Jensen, Dr. Young, thanks for worrying about me. Hey, if you're feeling all better, how about changing back into your own clothes? I washed your clothes for you, okay? So they're nice and clean. These clothes? Wasn't Detective Gumshoe holding on to them? He said forensics was done with them, so he gave them back to me. Have they revealed the results of the analysis yet? Hmm, to be honest, I actually didn't think to ask about that. Now, now, more importantly, let's hurry up and get you changed, Kay. Hmm, still, isn't it better if we do not remove her bandages? Ah, uh, she should be fine now. Kay just bumped her head. She didn't really have any other major injuries. But that's why she Then, got... why was she so heavily bandaged? Better safe than sorry! A pound of prevention is worth an ounce of cure. That's my motto. What a troublesome motto! Come on, Kay, let's get you dressed up over there. Take her to, like, the bathroom first? Now, this is definitely what a great thief should look like. A smile certainly suits you best. In the past, and now as well. I like Meek K better. <laughs> Miss Von Karma, thank you for coming too. I, I I only came because Scruffy asked me to. That's Scruffy, he also wanted to see your energetic self again. Gummy. What happened to Gummy? Who knows? Maybe he was disgusted with that man who was willingly throwing away his prosecutor's badge. Detective Gumshoe. I must be going soon. I'll be taking these ladies in for questioning. Ah, what's going to happen to the two of them? Once aided in, one aided in the murder of an attorney, the other forged an autopsy report 18 years ago. Statu oh no, statute of limitations for that case is not up! That was the whole yep. point of the last case. <laughs> Those crimes definitely won't disappear. Of course, I will mention in court that they were being blackmailed by Blaze. We'll be just fine. As long as Granny's by my side, we're invincible. She's my power star. <laughs> well then, take care. Yeah. Now then. Just a lot of heart. Okay. Oh, a lot of you're here too. Sorry to ask so soon right after you regained your memories, but I have some questions. Sure, ask me anything you want. What were you doing on the day you lost your memories? On that day, I was asked to come to Gord Lake. Gord Lake? Really? I don't know who called me there, though. As I was watching the moon at Gord Lake, a person in a red raincoat approached me. All of a sudden, he used some kind of drug to knock me out. What? What is she saying? The place where Kay saw the moon was at Gord Lake? When I woke up, it seems I somehow ended up on the roof of the Grand Tower. My mind was still in a daze, so I stumbled around for a bit. That's when I found the person in the red raincoat collapsed. I was startled. And when I stepped back in panic, I fell from a high place and got knocked out cold again. And when I woke up, all my memories were gone. Ain't that convenient. The person in the red raincoat. Who exactly was that person? 
Oh yeah, I was certain I saw them walking in midair. Hmm, somehow this is all starting to make my head hurt. Please calm down. You're just a little confused because you've only recently gotten your memories back. Most likely, this is the main cause of your confused memories. You fell in a hole, your memories of two places, the name on the... <laughs> that doesn't make Memory sense. Memory of two places. This is probably the main cause of your confused memories. You saw the moon at both Gord Lake Park and at the Grand Tower rooftop. Which led you to confuse the two places. Huh? But aren't they totally different places? Even if I was in a daze, do you really think I'd get them confused? Most likely, there was something at the Grand Tower which led to your confusion. A fountain? Is it this thing over here or the cherry tree? Probably the... I don't know. I actually don't remember the fiber. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. I, like, have to sneeze, but it's not coming out. Oh. The Grand Tower Rooftop and Gord Lake have two points in common. You sounded like those sneeze monsters from Zoom Oh. <laughs> the allergic yeah. cliffs. Yeah. They both have a cherry tree and a food stall. Now that you mention it! Your memories were confused because you had been in two similar locations. The person that you first saw could not have been walking in midair. They were simply walking on the ground at Gord Lake Park. Mm -hmm. You must have gotten that scene confused with the Grand Tower rooftop. So that's what happened. How dare they steal the memories of a great thief! They'll pay for this! Nevertheless, I wonder who the person that assaulted Kay was. The person in the red raincoat who appeared at Gord Lake. I swear if it's Shelly the Killer again. Hmm? What's that noise? It sounds like it's coming from the storeroom. Mr. Edgeworth, let's go check it out! W what's this? My shutter bug sense is tingling. I'm sensing me another scoop! Y you're still here? <laughs> April 6th, 9.53 a.m. Grand Tower, 51st floor storeroom. I saw this earlier. Like, way you did. earlier. You I'm did. like, there is something here. Mr. Edgeworth, this walkie-talkie thing's what's beeping. Hmm, this transceiver. Why do I feel like I've seen it somewhere before? Mm -hmm. That was from case 2-4. It's still beeping, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not particularly familiar with this sort of device. Come on, we have to answer it. Here goes. Hello, Edgeworth speaking. k, -K please don't just answer it on your own. I am speaking with Mr. Miles Edgeworth, I yep. presume. Th this voice is... Shelly the Killer! I congratulate you on resolving the case. However, can you truly say in good conscience that it has been solved? Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Are you aware of the mastermind who is pulling the strings behind this incident? You! Why do you know about the incident? That's not important right now, wouldn't you agree? Right now, we're discussing the mastermind behind this case. I've had an inkling that such a person existed even before you said anything. After all, there was evidence to suggest that someone had used K to disrupt the investigation. Huh? There was... So... Who's the mastermind? I would like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Would you kindly show me the evidence that indicates the existence of a mastermind? You're over the radio, you can't see it. Um... Did we ever use that? I don't think we did. We never used the purple flower. It's probably the letter in K's possession, but she never wrote it. This indicates the existence of a mastermind in this case. Hmm. I can't say I really understand. Oh, whoops. I am very sorry, but I also do not understand. Gah! So this wasn't it? Wasn't there anything else that was left unexplained among the evidence? I await your answer, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh wait, that was the letter from Jill. We wanted the letter from K. It was the letter that K allegedly sent to the victim. Come to think of it, I don't remember writing that letter at all. Who could have prepared this letter? I too am quite curious to know. So, you're not the one who wrote the letter? What could I possibly gain from doing such an act? 
Is it not necessary for you to stand in court in order to make the truth clear? What can you possibly do now that your badge has been taken away from you? I look forward to finding out from the shadows. This man, how does he know that? Do we have an understanding? Please ensure you do not betray my trust. Now then, if you'll excuse me. He said the case wasn't solved yet. What did he mean by that? And why would Mr. The Killer even bother telling us that? Ugh, nothing makes sense anymore. This case has not reached its true conclusion yet. Yeah, I kind of figured. However, although I've lost my prosecutor's badge, who am I? Who I am still has not changed. While I don't know where this may lead me, I shall reveal the truth. I swear it. The end. The end of case four. We didn't see any of Detective Gumshoe at the end. Nope. And we get the final case of the game. The Grand Turnabout. Oh my gosh, that case is freaking amazing. <laughs> Apparently. This is my second favorite case in the whole series. And it's because... really closely behind Bridge to the Turnabout. Really? Okay. Yes. Like that was an epic case. The only you so did you really like this case? Oh, well, <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> that does look terrible. Okay, your your body's been spliced a little bit. A little bit, but I, I I wonder who could be on the cover of the final the best case. Oh, uh, it's it's Toon Link from Wind Waker. <laughs> it is Toon Link for sure. Yeah, grand turnabout. I'm so pumped for this case. I've been looking forward to this case since we started the first game. <laughs> Really? <laughs> this case is so good. Like wow. the only the only reason this is not my favorite case, uh, there are two reasons. One, Bridge to the Turnabout does a better job of wrapping up multiple games. Yes. And also, like Bridge to the Turnabout, I really don't have any complaints with. There are a few parts of this case where I'm like, this is a little slow. Okay. But other than that, oh my gosh, like you have no idea what's waiting for us in this case. It's it's amazing. I okay. hope I hope you think it's amazing too. I, I hope don't. So too. I don't want to overhype well, it. Well, all. I mean, everyone will get to follow along as I learn, you know? For sure. So, stay tuned for that. Yeah, it's definitely look forward to that next time. It's going to be so much fun. I'm super excited about that. You can't miss it. <laughs> and, anyways, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.